Asymmetric encryption is just one of the operations you can do within asymmetric cryptography. And RSA is the quintessential asymmetric algorithm because it's the only one that can do asymmetric encryption. Let's talk about it. Hey friends, my name is Ed Harmouche. Welcome to another video in my cryptography series. As we mentioned earlier in the crypto series, asymmetric cryptography is a group of operations that all require two different values, generally one made public and one made private. Within asymmetric cryptography, there are three possible operations, encryption, signatures, and key exchanges. In this lesson, we're gonna be talking about encryption. We also mentioned that there's only three possible asymmetric algorithms, RSA, Diffie-Hellman, and DSA. And of those three, only one of them can do encryption, and that is RSA. So this lesson is gonna be talking about both asymmetric encryption and the RSA algorithm. Earlier in the course, I gave you this definition for encryption, and I showed you this illustration to represent it. I told you that encryption takes something plain and readable to anybody, encrypts it and turns it into ciphertext, which is unintelligible, and then has the ability to decrypt it to turn it back into plain text. Well, asymmetric encryption does the exact same thing, except it does it with two different keys. One key will handle the encryption, and then another key will handle the decryption. Earlier, we talked about symmetric encryption, and with symmetric encryption, it was the same key that did the encryption and the decryption. With asymmetric encryption, it's two different values. With asymmetric encryption, the public key will be used to do the encryption, and the private key will be used to undo the encryption. And if you think about it, this is the only thing that makes sense. If you could encrypt something with the private key, that would mean the public key could do the decryption, which means anybody could do the decryption and you wouldn't want that. Instead, it only makes sense if the public key is doing the encryption and only whoever has the private key, which was never shared, can undo that encryption and decrypt the original content. The purpose of asymmetric encryption is to provide a cryptographic property known as confidentiality. This is provided because only whoever has the private key can reverse the ciphertext back into the original plaintext and therefore read the original message. Now, doing encryption and decryption is just doing some math on various ones and zeros. And there is an algorithm which defines the math you have to do in order to encrypt with one value, the public key, and decrypt with the other value, the private key. That math comes down to the only algorithm you can use to do asymmetric encryption, and that algorithm is RSA. RSA is the only algorithm you can do asymmetric encryption with. The other two asymmetric algorithms, DSA and Diffie-Hellman, are unable to do encryption and decryption as it's illustrated here. Only RSA is capable of doing encryption. The math involved in the RSA algorithm incurs a computational cost. And that makes sense because it's difficult to imagine a mathematical operation you can do with one value and undo with a different value entirely. So when you're doing RSA, remember that you can only do RSA on smaller, limited datasets. You can't use RSA to encrypt every message sent between two people or every file on your hard drive. To do RSA encryption, you would feed into the formula the plaintext you're trying to encrypt and the public key. The result will be the ciphertext. Then, to undo this with RSA decryption, you would feed in that same ciphertext and the private key, and the result will be identical to the original plaintext you started with. Since this is a cryptographic essentials course, we're not going to go much further into the actual math of the RSA algorithm. But if you're anything like me, I didn't fully wrap my head around RSA until I actually saw the math in action. I do have another video that I made previously that goes into the math of RSA and proves to you you can encrypt with one value and decrypt with another value. If you're interested in that, I'll include a link down below. Otherwise, there is one last idea I need to leave you with regarding RSA. I told you that RSA involves encrypting with the public key and decrypting with the private key. But the math itself is what's called commutative, which means it works in both directions. Which means not only can you encrypt with the public key and decrypt with the private key, you can also do this in reverse. You can use the private key for the encryption operation and that'll produce something encrypted, and then you can use the matching public key to turn it back into the original plaintext. Of course, that means you no longer have confidentiality because if the public key is used for decryption, that means anybody can read the message you are trying to send. However, this functionality does provide the option to use RSA for another operation outside of encryption. And I'll be talking about that next. In the meantime, I just wanted to drop this as a teaser to thoroughly explain RSA for you. That said, when you think of asymmetric encryption, think of encrypting with the public key and decrypting with the private key. And so that wraps up the essentials of RSA and asymmetric encryption. 
in the next lesson we'll be looking at signatures. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.